The next thing will be reading order. Because, um, let me put this away. If you look at this document, the order is not top left to bottom right and then from page to page. Um, if you look at the pages panel, you will actually see that I have created this as a six page document. Strictly speaking, the order is wrong, because the first page is not the first page. The first page is, I don't even know, it's the fifth page. So, um, if, you, if you take this, well, this, is, well, this is not page one, this is page one. And if you have the, the, the flyer and you open it, and you start reading it, it's not that you turn to the back and do this first. It's usually not what it is left, it's that you open it. Okay, so this is page two. You could argue this is page three. And then you open further, it's four, five, and then if you don't forget it, six. <clears throat> and the, the, the flow of the, of the text is accordingly. So you have to put this reading or information inside the um, InDesign document. And you would do this if you don't have make the text by using the article feature, and I will do it first using the article feature, and then I just do it also using made to tag. <clears throat> and who has worked already with the article feature in the in CS55 or CS6? A few people. It, it, whether you use made to tag or not, it's really cool. It really makes a difference, because the other option is to use XML structure. Um, like this thing here. Uh, where you put all the content inside here and ma map it to an XML structure and it's, it's, it can be done, it works. Uh, but it's, it's much more difficult to, to really understand what's going on and how to do it. If you have a strong XML background, you may like it, but most people don't like it. Yeah? No. No, not so far. Do you see use for it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one problem will be that some features can work in design, but others will be difficult to, to implement because in design, uh, in, sorry, in copy is just about about the article, about the article yeah, not not the whole arrangement of, of the content. But, uh, you may not uh, make up like the Yeah, so uh, uh, you're right, Renee. So sometimes there's a confusion between this kind of article and articles that you export to uh, in copy <coughs> or inside an editorial workflow system. And it's not, most of the time, it's not the same. So uh, with the articles panel, what you do is you define articles which are just lo logical arrangements of content. Uh, it doesn't have to be a newspaper article. It could be a chapter in the book. It could be a chapter in the magazine. It could be a section in, 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 a, in a manual. So it's whatever you think is, is a part of the content that belongs together is, is, is what uh, InSign calls article in the article panel. And is, there's no connection with InCopy. So article is one thing and InCopy is something else. And it, it's, you could make it match, but it's not matched by definition. And what you do is you, you create an article. There's two ways. You can do uh, click on the plus sign and say, I want an article. And I call it PDF UA right away because it's my main topic here. Um, I want to include when exporting. So I would actually want to make use of this information. Um, and then I select, I need to be in the object selection mode. I select the, the first object here containing the, the heading and also the first piece of text. And I say um, add. I click on the plus sign. So this frame is added to my logic, logical article. And then I would be using the next piece of content. Let's say this, this list is the next piece of content. I would click on plus 
and it's added. So I, I'm establishing a connection between certain parts of the content and the order of the pieces within this section. And then I could be doing, let's say I wanted to have the image here. This is not the image, so this is the image, and I say plus, puts the image here, and maybe I'm following copyright laws, so I'm also putting the copyright in the content. Um, I click, let's say, I click on the logo, on the AIM logo, and then the AIM URL here, and so on. I could also be <coughs> doing it by drag and drop, so I could grab, let's say, this uh, PDF association logo and just drag it in the right position in this list. If I, um, move it below <coughs> the list, it will create a new article. <coughs> so I put it here, I grab the URL. It, it's a matter of personal preference whether you like drag and drop more or whether you like the clicking on the, on the plus sign more. Um, the problem is, if you have a complex layout, it can be, become very messy. So sometimes you have lots of frames sitting on top of each other, you don't even know which frame you have selected at this moment. Uh, sometimes uh, when I started this, I was doing uh, this game where I wanted to select the PDF station logo and to find out whether it's actually the logo and not the shape around it, I deleted it and said, oh, I was the right one. <laughs> I do undo and then I do something. <coughs> um, so anyway, so that's how you do it in any sign. This is not made to tag it. It's just the article panel in any sign. If I throw this away, um, I can do the same thing uh, with made to tag using shortcuts again. So what I could do is I click on this first frame, and I say <coughs> Command uh, Shift N for new. Um, <coughs> I get an, a, a, a small dialog, um, which is offering me to create an article, and it also picks up the first piece of text in the content. It's a bit more than I want here, so I, I just remove this one here, um, and I click OK, and it also creates just the same thing, an article. So it's not a private data structure, we're using the same mechanism. We're just making it faster to use. So I click on, let's say, the second item, Command Shift A for adding. I add this one here, I add the image, and I'll undo this. I add the image, and I intentionally get it wrong here. So I add the image. And it's just saying rectangle. Oh, it's not an image. I did something wrong. Um, in this case, of course, I know this because I built the document. Um, there is a kind of shadow between the white text and, and the background image just to make the um, image darker where the text is, to make it stand out more clearly, speaking about visual contrast. Um, and if I have forgotten this is the case, um, I may just grab the wrong object. There could be like five objects in the same space and I don't immediately see which is the image and which is something else sitting there. Um, so this is not good. Um, and there is a keyboard shortcut, and I have to look it up actually, uh, where you can ask um, InDesign using made to tag um, to show current selection only. I only want to see the currently selected object and hide everything else, which is um, option command S. So this is the object I just selected, which is the rectangle. So now I want to... Uh, let, let's click here just for the sake of, of argument, and then I say, okay, because it's white text, you don't actually see it, but you see very clearly it's not the image. So now I'm clicking on the image. Uh, I don't hit the image. What's that? <laughs> uh, that could be the image. So there's a bug in the software. Uh, <laughs> I have to find out why, why it's not showing the image. Um, so, but anyway, there's a keyboard shortcut just to show you the current selection, and, uh, especially when you have very complex arrangements of objects on, on, on the page. Uh, it's really helpful. You, have to do that one by one. you cannot select more than one object. Like you can select more than one object, but then the, the relative sequence order is not necessarily the same that makes sense. So sometimes you, afterwards you can reorder them. You can reorder them. But yeah, it, that's just, yeah. yeah. And I think it should also honor the click orders. So if you do click and then shift click, you do command shift A. So yeah. So you could control this by if it's individual frames, you just do click and shift click. 
And InDesign internally remembers the sequence in which you click the objects. Okay. And then you do um, Command Shift A and then you add them in that order. Okay. Based on, on the sequence you click in, it's not based on the representation um, of the object. No. If you have a group, then it's based on the way the group was built. And, and that again depends on the sequence in which you click the objects to make them part of the group. Okay. Which is not necessarily the same uh, as, as the sequence that makes yeah, a lot okay. of sense. Um, so I've done this first page, now I have to kind of look at my player and find out where it's going on. So it's going on on the second half of the document on the lower left. So <laughs> this one person is paying attention. So you see it's being added at the end, this is not where the image is. So I have to put it next to the image. Um, and of course I could remember that because of the, the file, uh, the, the, the image file name that this is the image I'm, I'm talking about, but maybe I don't remember. So I could select the image again, and then it would put a, a blue square next to the current selection. So this is the image that I have currently selected. So I could <laughs> drag my copyright notice just below this current item. and then Another thing that's quite interesting with the, with the uh, article panel, I moved to just to some other location, so I know this is the image, but I don't know where it is on the page. So I can double click, and it just jumps to the, the object. Um, continuing with the, with the rest, so in this case, I just have one text frame for, for this page, so I'm just doing Command Shift A, it's being added. Um, <coughs> same here. And then same here. I have an image here. I think it's not anchored. Um, I'll add that. So the story is building while I'm doing this. And so I have done the, the inside. Now I have to go to this part again, add this, and then maybe this is the last page. Um, and now I'm not sure whether it, this is already inside the frame or it's not. And there's another keyboard shortcut, show everything that is not attached to the article. Command Shift X. And because this is left behind, this means I have not put it inside an article yet. So I still have to do this piece. I can also see there's other pieces that I intentionally did not make part of the article. Like the red background or the, the, the shadows here. Uh, these don't carry any meaning. A red right angle per se is not meaningful. It's just the background. So I would not put it inside the article. The article is only about meaningful content. So the one piece I would have to add is this. Uh, I'll do the text first, and then maybe I'll do the logo. And then I should be done. So there's nothing left here. There's nothing left on the second uh, part of the document. So I have captured all the relevant content. And that's also important. Don't put design elements there, like decorative elements or backgrounds. They don't belong to the content of the article. So again, it's a mechanism to do things a little bit faster than you can do them with just uh, the built-in InDesign features. Uh, so now it would be nice to know um, I should actually have switched to this next mode here. Um, it would be nice if I had something else than the articles panel to double check the sequence. But if you have a long document and 10 articles, each article has 20, 30, 40 objects, it's very difficult to judge whether you have ca captured everything, whether the order is correct and so on. Something nicer would be very cool. <clears throat> so we have a preview feature uh, with made to tag. And what it does is, because we're in the end we're talking about tag PDF, what it does is it exports the document in the current state to tag PDF, converts the tag PDF to HTML, and shows the HTML in a diagnostic view. And again, we have a keyboard shortcut for this, Command Shift V for current article and Command Shift B for the whole document. And I'm going to use Command Shift V here. Um, and it's going to open a new window. 
with the um, stylized uh, presentation of the content. Um, so we see our heading level one with the he uh, heading or the title of the document. We see the text below it. We see the list. We see the image. And actually, the, the way we currently produce the image here is that we capture just the area on the page. That's why you, some of the non-image content is also <laughs> showing up. Uh, we have the, the credit. We have the logos at the bottom um, of uh, the page. One already has a real URL below it. The other one we still have to do something about, so it also gets a URL. Uh, and then we have the rest of the content. So you can actually look at this, maybe side by side, if you have a large enough monitor and double check whether you have everything in the right order and whether looking at the content actually does make sense. So a typical problem could be um, that the uh, piece of text that belongs to the first uh, H2 heading shows up somewhere else. And you can go through the article and just see what, what structure is behind it now. So this is a, is a mechanism to make it easy to create the articles and also to quickly double check whether the meaning, like the reading order, is really good. And there's also one other thing. And <coughs> the reason we have the coloring of the labels here is because of the export tag. So the, the stuff we did in the first step. And it's, <coughs> it's also a good idea to double check these here. Again. So the, do, the, do the headings make sense in the context where they are? Okay, so this is part two of, of the five-point list. Yeah? We have addressed semantic role. We have been using export tags. Uh, we have established the reading order for, for text content, but also for images or graphics and so on. Uh, that's good. 